Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Borostovsky. In a shocking turn of events, we've hit 100,000 downloads. I'm starting to think that you all actually like us. But seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. As I'm in the lab preparing season seven, get ready for a trip down memory lane. For the next few weeks, we're running the highlights of some of my favorite episodes. So hit that subscribe or follow button, whatever platform you're tuning in from. Your support means absolutely everything. And we literally couldn't be here without you. Don't settle. Do not settle. A lot of people put their career success in the hands of others. You have to be your biggest cheerleader. Heather Elkington is a leadership coach, author, and social media star helping new managers become high-performing leaders. As an assistant manager managing eight people, every single one of them were older than me. Within the first few weeks, I had to fire someone. I barely had any context. Why on earth am I here? Why have they given me this job? I was obsessed with working. I was working three jobs while I was at school, while I was doing my A-levels. I was just completely addicted. Do I need to go to university to be a leader? No, absolutely not. It doesn't matter that you are 21 years old and it doesn't matter that you've had barely any experience. I went from managing a very small team to being the operations director, working with thousands of people, leading five different teams. What advice do you have for younger people about how to have difficult conversations? A lot of people put their career success in the hands of others. They think that their manager is gonna magically take them on this journey and give them all the opportunities. The majority of them aren't. You have to be your biggest cheerleader. Post on LinkedIn about your successes. Make sure that when you go into one-on-ones with your manager, you take, these are my big wins for the week. This is the project I've completed. These are the KPIs, how I've hit them, how I haven't, what I'm gonna change, what I'm gonna do. Go and give them all that information. Don't assume they know that. You be in complete control of your career and do never, never, never leave it to someone else. And as soon as you start to see that you're in a company or you've got a boss that is holding you back either purposefully or by accident, get out of there. Advice for anyone who is either at the beginning of their career or just looking for a career change, go and work in a tiny company. Go and work in the smallest company you can possibly find that are growing and potentially like new and bringing on new technology and stuff. I only worked for this SaaS company for about a year, but I was the right-hand woman to the CEO. I was the executive assistant right-hand woman to the CEO and just probably got 10 years of life experience in just a year because you see everything. You see HR, you see um, marketing, you see sales, you see investment, like building your pitch deck. All of these, this huge wealth of experience. I was in essentially a PA role. If I had have gone to a bigger company in a PA role, you would have gotten none of that. You would have been an admin person. You would have been expected to just do the tick box task. But you go to a small company, you are thrown in at the deep end with everything and you get to learn so much. Do I need to go to university to be a leader? And I'm like, no, absolutely not. But leave your hometown and go and work for a company where you can be as close as possible to the founder and or CEO or you know the high senior management team. You will learn the same amount in six months as you would at university. A leader is someone who is intentional, like intentional about their response, intentional about their actions, intentional about the words that they use. They don't wing life. They're not turning up to work every day and winging decision-making and winging who they hire and like just thinking that because they are confident or skilled in their job, that that makes them good enough to be a leader. They need to be intentional about understanding their emotions, understanding others, being empathetic, overcoming bias, which is huge one for leaders. Like as long as you are being intentional, not perfect, you don't need to be, you are going to be biased. Like we can't get, you can, will never ever ever be able to move every bit of bias, but just be intentional every day about overcoming it. Intentional about instead of getting angry and just shouting at a member of your team, take a minute reflect why are you angry is it maybe you do need to have that conversation and maybe the angry tone does need to come across because it's serious but if you haven't thought about that first you're going to make some big old mistakes and you're going to upset a lot of people along the way and depending on what kind of leadership position you're in your team or business will fall apart in the end if you're not intentional about it 
managing your own emotions is such a big skill. And I know that as a parent, for example, that's where I have been tested the most because lack of sleep, overwhelm, having to think about the safety and happiness of beings that are completely dependent on you and they also push your buttons and that has really pushed me to really reflect much more about why am I reacting in a certain way and I think in leadership as well when you have deadlines your shareholders are on your back you know your team is disengaged mm -hmm. how you show up and how you manage your own emotions and how you have those conversations is the thing that will determine how successful you are and how people will respond around you. Because what you said earlier, and I don't remember how you phrased it, but you have that responsibility where it spills over. You have influence over many different level layers of organization or the people who you're managing. And if you are not showing up in that way, then how can you expect other people to do that? It's essentially becoming an adult. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's about, you know, the, the intentionality. <laughs> it's about growing up. It's about, you know, leaving poor habits behind and stepping into and owning yourself mm -hmm. and then being able to do that to help other people to step into that as well. An assistant manager managing eight people, every single one of them were older than me. And within the first few weeks, I had to fire someone. I barely had any context. I just got told from my manager, you need to let this person go to let this person you do it. Because I had imposter syndrome, I thought, I can't back out. I can't tell anyone I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to have to pretend this is like the 50th time I've fired someone. So I took the lady downstairs. She was probably 15 years older than me. I was in my very early 20s. And I said, letting you go. And she just looked me straight in the eye and was like, you can't do that. You don't know what you do and you can't tell me I've not got my job. So then she went to my manager to get the confirmation. After that, I was just shell of a human being. I was like, I can't tell anybody off. Don't, don't settle. Do not settle for, I have so many people on Instagram. I want to say at least 10 people a day message me on Instagram to tell me they or either in a management position or looking to move into a management position, but their boss isn't giving them the support. They're, they're, they're getting stuck every time they ask, every time they show like who they are and go for the opportunities, they're getting stuck. My advice is always the same. Have the, firstly, have you had a really direct conversation? I mean, be honest with yourself about that. Have you sat them down and said, I want to progress into a management position within the next 12 months or within the next six months and whatever that is how do i get there what do you need me to do so that this time in 12 months i am leading a team in this department or in another department right. if they say that's the only way you can truly know because at that point i have to say to you we don't have that available in which case it doesn't align with your goals you've got to go or they'll say yes let's do it and they'll take you along this road but you will, because you've asked so directly, you will very quickly know if they're bullshitting you. So you'll very quickly learn if you get six months in and they've not done the things they said they would do, time to go. If you liked watching inspiring stories of leaders from all walks of life and would like to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.